I want to help you understand, if you're watching this video, how to pay attention to the little details of homeowners or customers when you're trying to close them. This is going to increase your percentage of closing like crazy, right? So you got to pay attention to the little details. So for example, when you come into someone's house or you come into someone's, you know, you're sitting down over the phone or whatever, your whole objective is to figure out what? What is the whole objective? Where they're at and where they're trying to go. A lot of times what ends up happening, you're here, okay? And you're trying to get them here. Problem is, is that they sometimes, they have big obstacles that are in front of them, which is why they can't see that vision coming to fruition, right? And everybody has a little bit of a different place they want to go to. There's different concepts you go through in a presentation, right? Different things that you're talking about, right or wrong. You have to make sure that when you're talking to them, that you're not assuming they understand what you're talking about. You have to look for cues to see if they do understand or don't understand. The way I just asked that question was me testing you on that little portion I just did, right? So I'm paying attention to how you guys said what? Yes. Because the way you say yes makes a huge difference. For me, as a salesperson, I'm trying to pay attention to how you're saying yes. I'm, I'm, I'm catching the nuances, the innuendos, the, the small little, little body language things that they do. For example, when they don't understand, you'll start seeing, like, I'll give you an example. I'm going to say something right now that you probably will not understand. Okay? I'm going to start saying things you probably don't understand. You understand what I'm saying or no? You didn't understand. No, you did not. You were like, what? What is he fucking saying? Th th that right there, that body language that you just gave me, gave me a cue. I just said some stupid shit just to confuse like, What? And you literally gave me the body language I was looking for. So you got to get good at knowing when they do understand and when they don't understand. You understand what I'm saying or no? He doesn't understand. Look at him. You see? You got to pay attention. You got to pay attention to how people understand what you're saying. You got to know they don't understand. Even though he's like, yeah, I understand. No, you don't. Right? Just because they say they understand does not mean they what? They understand. You got to see their body understands. Their, their mind will understand and their body will let you know. But if their mind doesn't understand, their body's going to say something fucking different. It's usually, you're looking for, two, looking for body language. Right? So you have to look at their eyes and how they pay attention. They literally, like if they don't understand, you will know they don't understand. But a lot of times what we do when we're in a presentation, we're trying to get here so fucking bad. We're trying to push them to the fucking close so bad that we're just like, yeah, yeah, you understand, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you just, uh, and you're just going through the fucking motions. You're not, you're not, when I go through a presentation, my job is not to go through the motions, right? My job is to stimulate emotion. You understand? My job is to stimulate, you understand what I'm saying or no? Because you're not understanding. I don't stimulate emotion. Yeah, what does that mean, stimulate emotion? How, do, what, how can you stimulate emotion? They already have it. You just got to unravel it, right? The easiest thing to do. Yeah, like I'll give you an example. I have a lot of emotion inside of me, right? Let's say you wanted me, you wanted me, to, be, you wanted me to erupt. You don't, cre you don't create anger in me as an example. You just poke the fucking bear somewhere. You know that's going to be like a little bit of a boop, and all of a sudden, a boof, the person explodes, right? So it's easier to do that to people that actually have something inside of them. You have to stimulate the right emotion in the, in the, home, in the homeowner, customer, prospect. Why? Because they already have the emotion. They already are emotional about something. Right? They want something or they know something. You got to figure that out. And how you stimulate it is by, by, by becoming their, you're working with them basically. They're your, they're your partner. Right? They're your friend. They're your, you're guiding them through the process. And you have to figure out what is it gonna, what's going to stimulate this individual. And you need to also understand like when you're talking to them, you got to figure out what are some cues they're giving me that's like, okay, that's important to him. Okay, he didn't understand there. Okay, I got you. Right? How do you, how do, you do that? But you got to get the what? The pitch and the presentation where? Out of the fucking way. So you need to know the pitch and the presentation, like the back on your hand, like it doesn't even matter because all you're doing is looking for cues on where are they at. During the presentation, do you guys ever pay attention to their, to their impulse sometimes? Do you see it growing sometimes? Do you pay attention to that? Right? You have to pay attention to the cues that they give you with the impulse, but you also have to pay attention with the cues of how they understand what you're talking about. Because a lot of times, especially some people, we're smart. Some people are not so smart. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is going to be very difficult for smart people. Someone like yourself, you're very smart, you remember things very well. It's harder for you because you got to simplify shit for some people that are not so smart. Because smart people are not the ones that make decisions. Right? It's the average person that makes the decision because you're dealing with an average individual. We're not saying they're not smart people, 
but they're just regular Joey Schmoes, right? And that's what you're trying to get to say yes to you. So at the end of the day, your, 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 your objective is not to show them how smart you are because some people, when they present, they want to show them how amazing they are. You, know, you, you get what I'm saying or no? I don't know if you guys ever experienced that. You're trying to be the guy. And if you ever see a real professional, they're not trying to be the guy. What are they trying to do? They're trying to help, help the person get to the place they want to go and let them be the guy, right? It's helping them believe in themselves that they can actually make the decision to buy the product and buy the service. That's all it really is. And the same thing with building teams. It's the same concept. You don't want to be the guy because the second you're the guy, guess what? You got to do all the fucking work. Why, why would you want to be the guy? Why would you want to be the guy that everyone depends on? You don't want to be that guy. You want to help other people be the guy. It's a lot of work for no fucking reason, right? It's the same thing with customers. Your job is not to show them how amazing you are. You can do that in a very well. You can impress them. You can make them feel like a million bucks. You can make them feel like that you're the best shit since sliced fucking bread. But that's not going to make them sign up. They don't sign up because you're amazing. They sign up because they see that whatever this product or service can do is going to help them. It's, it's, it's all about what's in it for them. So you need to figure out the cues. When you're going through the presentation, oh, he didn't understand this concept. And you have to go what? Go back again. So you may be going through a slide. You may be going through, I don't know, the utility does this, 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 and that, right? And you got to know your customer. If they're very, 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 very smart, make, fill their fucking ego. Fill their fucking ego. If they're really t intelligent, fill their ego. If they're not so smart, make them feel like they're fucking smart, right? Tickle their fucking ego a little bit. Make them feel like, oh, you, you should probably know this, right? Make yourself look a little bit smaller than you actually really are. Help them believe in themselves a little bit and make them feel good in the process, but you got to pay attention. You got to listen. Right? A lot of times they're going to give you answers. They're going to give you cues in the presentation on what's really stopping them. Because a lot of times they're not going to tell you, well, I don't want to do this because of X, Y, and Z. I learned this a long time ago from my mentor. He's like, Michael, you cannot fill your ego and your pocket at the same time. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I want this, bro. There's a lot of people with a high ego that are broke. Right or wrong? A lot of fucking high egotistical people. Like an example, professors. <laughs> they're fucking broke, but they're so egotistical. They're so fucking smart. Great. I don't need to be the smart guy. I don't give a fuck about being smart. I care about the bag, baby. That's what I care about. Because if I got the bag, I can hire all the smart people on the planet. Right? You don't need to be the smartest guy on the planet. You just got to get the bag and go hire the smartest people on the planet. So you can build whatever you want to build. Right? So... This is not what you want to do in the presentation. That's what a lot of sales guys do because they have high egos. They want to fill themselves up. Oh, I got the best presentation. No one gives a shit. You think I do my trainings for, for myself to feel inflated? Honest to God, you think I do it to make myself feel good? No. I do the training because I want to fucking make money. If I train you guys to be amazing, I'll make money. That, that's the whole concept. I, I'm not trying to show like how great I am. No, I'm not Muhammad Ali, man. I'm going to show you how great I am. No, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to show how great you are and how amazing you are, how amazing the product is, and you need the product. Boom, boom, boom. I'm the middle man. Boom, but I got the bag. Right? Who's the smart one, really? The one who has a high ego or the one who has the money in the bag? The money. Exactly. So when you go to a customer's house, when you're talking to a homeowner, when you're talking to a potential prospect, your job is to make them feel like a million fucking dollars. So that Because remember, the more confident they feel, what are they going to do? People that are confident make fucking choices. If they're not confident, they don't make choice. So my job is to help them believe in themselves. Their skepticism is here. My job is to build their confidence to go right here. Because the second they're here, this is the action threshold. Right? This is the action threshold. This is where they make action. If I get their confidence up here, are they going to make a decision to say yes? Yeah. Fuck yeah, because the action threshold, they already passed the action threshold. So my job is to build their confidence. How do I build their confidence? By making them... By belittling them? By making them seem like I'm smarter than them? I got the, I got the answers? No! It's making them feel like you, you, you're the fucking G. You're the fucking best. You know what to do. You know, you got all the answers. And all I'm doing here is just helping you with that decision-making process. And because they feel good and they feel awesome about and they feel, remember, they have clarity, right, on the decision, guess what they're going to say? Fuck it. Let's do it. It's much easier for you to guide someone that has clarity than someone that's blind. Have you ever tried to guide someone that's blindfolded? How difficult is it for them to trust you and to actually walk with you and walk at a fast pace? Very difficult. But when someone sees what you see, how fast is it and how comfortable is it to go with them? Right? It's much... You understand what I'm saying or no? When someone sees what you Boom. see... Boom. You, did you pay attention to that cue? Mm -hmm. Right. I caught that because I remember as a, as a speaker, you got to pay attention to the cue. He's not, he's not stupid. It's just his mind was somewhere else for a quick second. I said something too fast. He didn't catch it. He's trying to understand. And again, I have to pause. And say, hey, did you understand? It's not a bad thing. It's, it's normal. Oh,
But when someone's blindfolded, right, how fast can they run? They probably wouldn't run, they're probably a little bit afraid. Even if you're holding their hand, they're still kind of afraid. But the second they can see it, what happens? They can run with you. They can go as fast as you go. You're not presenting shit. You're, un, 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 you're revealing. That's what you're doing. You're helping them see things that they didn't see before. How many times have you explained to the customer net metering? So many times. So you, you know it like the back of your hand. But that is their first fucking time seeing it. That is their first time hearing it. So when you're going through that information, you're not reminding yourself what net metering is. You're trying to make sure they can see what you fucking see. The reason why I'm so excited about where I'm going, about my life, because I see certain things. And my job is for you guys to see what I see. If you saw what I saw, would you be more excited about life? Yeah. Maybe a little bit angry because you might be a little bit annoyed about certain things, right? But you'd be fucking fired up. Because you can see what I see. So my job is not to fucking say, hey, look at that. No, my job is to give you enough information, enough clarity so you can see what I fucking see. Because the second you see what I see, dude, I can't stop you. It's the same thing with the customers. Your job is to help them see what you see. Remember, when you sit down with a homeowner, when you sit down with a customer, when you're a potential prospect, they don't see nothing that you see. You got to look at it from, the, you, you got to understand something. I learned this from one of my other mentors. You have to have the right lens with the right language. You gotta understand that everyone sees it from their perspective. I gotta take these glasses off and put it in the customer's hand. That's okay, what does he see through that fucking glasses? What does he see? Where is he at? How would he see it? Because a person on the bottom, I'm sorry? Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, a person that's sitting on the bottom of the mountain with, with that view, it has a different view with the person that's on top of the mountain with the, at, the, at the peak. Very different angle. One is looking up, one is looking down. Completely different. Right? So you're at a different level when you're talking to a customer. You're not better than them, not that, but you have more information than them. So when you have more information than them, a lot of times we forget, like, oh shit, yeah, you understand Grid Harding, right? Okay. And you just keep going. Instead, you gotta slow down a little bit for them to understand what you understand. So you need to see things from where they're at. What do they see? What do they know? What do they believe, right? That's why for me, I always say this, people make decisions based on three, three things. It's emotion, it's logic, and it's also their belief system. If they have any limiting belief factors, they're not going to make a decision. So for example, I already know that if I'm going to sit down as an example, just having a little bit of knowledge of Democrats, Republicans, just a little, I already can see how they think. A more Republican family is going to be more about conservatism, about having, you know, husband and wife do things together, and having a family-oriented individual, blah, 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 all those belief systems. The left side, as an example, the Democrat side, they may be more into independence, more into gay rights, more into this one. Nothing wrong with that, but I need to know who the fuck am I sitting down with. Because I can, the more I understand their belief system, the easier it is we understand what they fucking see. The more you know about what they see from their view, the easier it is for you to help them see what you want them to see, which is their dreams and goals, without these fucking objections stopping them. Because they're going to have those objections and you need to see it from their perspective. When someone tells you, oh, I'm afraid of my insurance dropping, what does that mean in their eyes? It may mean something completely different to you. To you, it may mean because you're afraid of looking for a new company. You don't know how to do the process because your uncle helped you last time. So you're fucking scared about doing it by yourself. To you, it may be, oh, I don't want to spend my money because I don't have that much money left over. It may be different for someone else. The same problem may be different for somebody else. you got to look at it from their angle. How will they see it? So you may think, oh yeah, objection hand. No, no, but you have to look at it. How will he perceive that objection? How will he or she perceive that fucking problem? And when you understand the customer like that, remember, you're not going fast into the Prezi. You're, you're literally walking through the crowd like a fucking slow motion and paying attention to every fucking little thing that goes on in, their home, in the home. When you're sitting down in that presentation, it's like the fucking whole world stops and the clock is ticking. You can even hear the fucking clock ticking. That's how slow you are because you're paying attention to everything. Get to their level. That's why I'd say it's called, it's called selling at their level. That's what Eric means by that. Getting to their level. You ever see how Eric communicates with customers? You're like, why is he saying such simple shit? I don't know if you pay attention to that. But you simplify it to their level. You want them to understand. Your job is not to get people onto your level. Your job is to get to people's levels, right? Now, if it's a smarter person, start talking smarter shit. If that's, if that's how he communicates, right? It all depends. But your job is not to show off how amazing you are and how great you are, your job is to show them how amazing they are and that they need this product more than ever and that you can help them with that decision-making process. And that's how you can stimulate a little bit of emotion because you're not doing it for yourself. You're doing it for them. You text the girl for three days straight, you're talking three days, all of a sudden she stops messaging you. Like, oh, she, she's messaging you like dry shit. Like, lol, 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 one word responses, one sentence, she didn't respond after six hours. 
Are you going to hit her up the fifth day? Why not? No, no, why not? Why not? You're going to hit her up the next day? Why not? Maybe. Or maybe you give it a little bit of a breather, right? Why? Because that's a fucking cue. It's a fucking cue. She didn't say stop talking. She's like, I'm not interested to talk right now. You must have said something that triggered her the wrong way or she got busy or she's talking to someone else or she's not interested. It could be a million fucking things. But then you're like, no, 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 close, close, close. And you don't get the fucking close. As a matter of fact, you're pushing away from the close. Right? So you got to look at those cues. You got to know when to pull in and when to push out. Or when to push in and when to pull out. Right? You got you know, you to understand that. Every homeowner is different. Every customer is different. So you got to know these things. You got to pay attention to what they are saying. And remember, if there's two people in the room, you got to pay attention to the husband. You got to pay attention to the wife. Because he may be locked in. She's fucking not locked in. That's why you always say, did that make sense? Any questions on your end? And you pay attention. And they say, no, I don't have any questions, but I see their body language has questions. Guess what? Mr. Mr. Customer, I understand you have the question, but it seems like you have a couple of things that you want to, something, you got to pull it out of them. If I feel like they don't understand, awesome. And they say yes, awesome. Can you do me a favor? Can you kind of give me a 30-second rundown of what I just explained to make sure we're on the same page? I'll do it with a customer. Why not? And they'll start explaining it. And then you'll be like, holy shit. Oh, my God. Thank God he explained it. They don't know what the fuck he just said. Because a lot of times people think they understand what you said. But they understood it in their own fucking way. And you're like, and then they, when they explain it, you're like, dude, oh, my fucking God. What the fuck did he, what the fuck was he thinking? Where was he when I was talking? Right? That's why a lot of times, what am I doing? What would you get out of this? What would you get out of this? What did I just say? Can you explain that to me? Can you repeat that to me? Can you help me understand that better? I'm always trying to see what you understand. Because if you don't understand what I understand, it's game over. I was talking to myself the whole fucking time. Absolutely. fucking lunatic That's why my, my stick rates are fucking high. You say, how do I get 92% stick rate? Because I literally pay attention to every fucking thing. And by the time I'm done, they're not fucking canceling. I would make sure. Would there be any reason? I, I wasn't afraid of asking this. Mr. Customer, they sign everything. I'm about to leave. Mr. Customer. Would there be any reason, I asked the craziest question, Mr. Customer, would there be any reason you would cancel this project? Would there be any reason you would say no to this? Would there be any reason you would cancel and not do business with Verizon? I used to always ask that. Why? Because I want, because dude, if I leave the fucking house and they're already thinking about canceling, I, I'm going to get it. I'm not going to be able to save them when I'm on the fucking phone. I want to be right there where there's a problem. Uh, they go, uh, I'm not leaving. You think I'm leaving? When they go, uh, they didn't ask. But they were like, oh, and then I fucking pull it out on them at the end. You understand? So the same thing goes to your customers now. They have some fucking hidden objections right before you're fucking about to leave. Ask them, hey, Mr. Customer, will there be any reason over the next three days you call me and cancel this project? You're probably afraid of asking that question. Why? Because you you're afraid of losing the sale right there and then. But what you don't understand is that you're going to lose that sale in two days anyway if you don't ask that fucking question. And by the way, they just signed everything. Their impulse is going to start dropping as time goes on the next day, the next two days. Mr. Customer, would there be any reason you would cancel this project over the next two, three days? And if they don't give you a firm answer of, no, 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 we're good, that's a fuck. They, they, there's a hidden object. Ah, uh, they start going, ah, uh, you got to ask them. You got to ask them. For those of you watching on YouTube, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. If you're not subscribed to the channel, do so, please. And we'll see you guys in the next video.